Jumping right back into the F12. I hope you guys watched the last video where we got everything set up for the radiator, the ignition, our pipe, through the motor, and we did everything in the last episode. So if you haven't yet, go watch that. We got our MHR Team 2 ignition. We got our Stage 6 water pump, Stage 6 racing cylinder, R1200 Stage 6 pipe. We got the Stage 6 12 mil crank in there. Everything is ready to go. Brand new lines to everything. Got everything mounted for our ignition setup. Even went with a new charging system since we lose the charging system on the ignition setup. So now the F12 is powered by an 18 volt Makita battery going through a converter. So that way we can run our lights and our water pump off the Makita battery now. This sweet stage six stand, which helps a lot with working on the bike, especially a bike like this where the kickstand, the bike lays like 45 degrees because it sits so low. If you have been following along with this, you know that this bike is ready to fire up. We were waiting on one thing to come in, actually a couple things. Most importantly, the coolant reservoir so we can finish plumbing everything for the coolant system. But second most important, for the motor, we are waiting on a carburetor. So originally we were going with a CP21. We went ahead and upgraded that up to a stage 6 26 mil PWK. So we're going to be tossing that in. We also got a little starter block off plate to go over here. Yeah, I'm not sure what jets are in here, so we're going to check all that out right now. I'm really not even sure what jetting I'm going to run. I've never really built one of these setups yet. It's going to be a learning curve for me. But uh, we'll toss this in, get her started up. And then uh, we'll go from there. Looks like we're rocking with a 125 main. Check the pilot, and then we're just gonna toss this in to get an idea of where we're starting at. Carb is all in there now. No air filter yet, but it's a tight squeeze, man. It almost hits the drain plug on the head, so I have to tilt the carb, and then it almost hits right here. It's a tight squeeze. It's almost time to change the intake to a front intake, but then I gotta move all this somewhere too. So we're gonna figure that out sooner than later probably, but uh, carb is on there. You can hear it maxing out. It's setting all the way down. Um, gonna suck some fuel through it, and I think we're ready to try to fire it up. Sounds crazy over here. Carb is loud, man. That's all I hear is the carb. Pipe sounds so quiet right now. Got a little too excited there revving this thing up, but man, we got it to about 150 degrees. Let it cool down, warm it up again, you know, let it kind of like settle in, everything get a little hot. Then next time we gotta put the coolant in so we can actually run it for a little bit longer. But man, this thing's ready to ride. All right, bad luck right now. I, I got the coolant reservoir that I've been like really searching for, for the Malaguti. The problem is I see that there's two types online. There's one with a bottleneck, it gets skinnier where the threads are, and there's the fat one like this. Looks like the radiator cap that I bought also is uh, not the right one. This is for Maybe a different year, I don't know, but uh, that sucks. So I'm gonna have to either figure something out or find one of these. Um, yeah, but this, I gotta figure out how it fits. But by the looks of it, it would go like this. And this curvature right here is to sit on this little lip area here. The only thing I'm a little confused about, so that would go there, that would go there. We'll twist that a little bit. Where does this mount to? It sticks so far out. Okay, we gotta figure that out. I took the one off the GP1. I believe both bikes are made in Spain, so uh, it fits. Yeah. And then I was like, you know what? I remember I had a GP1 that we parted out. This is the best part about keeping stuff like this organized. Grab the good old box that's labeled GP1. Radiator. Didn't even know an actual radiator was in here though, so I could have probably used that on the F12. But so here, hell yeah, that is clutch. Now that we got the reservoir hooked up on here, I got it mounted up, got it sit in the right spot, and I got our glove box cut out. 
enough to fit it through there. So that's how that's going to fit now. And I'm going to go ahead and put some coolant in it, bleed it, and see if we can't get this thing set up right. Let's hope there's no leaks now, boys. Oh, hello, there's a leak. That's a hole in that thing? What is that? There's a threaded part with a hole in it right there. That's strange. First fire up, we got a couple bugs to work out. So our fitting over here, uh, the temp sensor fitting looks like it's leaking a little bit. Uh, gonna pull that off and see if we can't fix it or have to find a better solution for the fitting. And then also it looks like the actual mating point from my silencer to the mount area is leaking, which is kind of weird because that was already connected when it came in the package. So might have to unbolt the packing area might have the silicone in there because that looks like it's leaking pretty damn bad honestly all the way down so currently working on a few things on the f12 finalizing some stuff so i pulled the temp sensor as you can see so we're about to put that back in pulled off the carb i'm actually gonna down jet the pilot in it just because i could tell it's so rich on idle it's just insane and then i put in my led bulb so as you can see now oh i'm a dumbass I forgot my water pump's hooked up and it's unplugged. <laughs> oh man. Why did I just do that to myself? Look at that. I really just did that to myself, boys. Well, now you can see. Jeez Louise. I can't believe I just did that. That's a mess. All right, F12 being a little bit of a pain right now, but I got the coolant temp fix. We ran some Teflon tape on there and uh, I just tested it out, it's good to go. There's nothing leaking from that. They're all good over here. Everything seems to be okay. I down jetted the pilot. I drilled a couple holes here for the back of the radiator just to let air through so it doesn't just run into the back of here. Usually on the liquid cool model, there's uh, some fins here molded into the plastic and it has an inlet for air to come through, but we didn't have that model, so. I went the easy route and drilled some holes in it, made it simple, lets air through very nicely. And I'm gonna go ahead and assemble the front of the scooter, this exhaust is just leaking from everywhere back here. So first it was leaking from here. I pulled this off and as you can tell in the seam in here, I ran a little bit of Honda Bond on this seam and on this seam. Now it's leaking out of this crease right here, which is crazy because I have these tightened all the way. It's leaking out of this little crease and then it's leaking out of this bottom one, as you can see, and it's dripping down onto here every time I start the bike. So let's get this thing somewhat assembled, ride it. We'll work out the kinks as we go. Alright boys, it is time to get the first little test ride on the F12. We're not going to go hard at all. This is basically just a kind of break in the motor. We're going to go fill it up with gas, kind of to see a little bit, but I don't expect uh, I don't expect the tuning to be spot on at all.
It needs a lot heavier rollers though, let me tell you. And if you're not familiar for the CBT setup, what I have on here is a stage six overrange. It's way too much rev right now, for sure. Oh, it's cold, boys. It's cold out here right now. It might not look like it, but... Everything looks good, no leaks from the head temp sensor. But yeah, I mean, it's staying cool. It's only 129 right now. Revs way too much though. And the back brake is terrible right now. It has like no back brake, I don't know why. This bike's weird, I've always had problems with the back brake on it. And it's like, it's weird because even when the back brake locks up, you can still pull it all the way to the grip. I don't like that. It doesn't have a stopping point. Like it just pulls all the way to the grip, no matter what. Even with brand new pads on it, the stiffer spring, I put, I actually doubled the spring. I'll show you. There's a spring inside of a spring on the back, but it's like, I don't know. It doesn't have a stopping point. I think like the brake pads are expanding and that little thing in the inside spinning. <laughs> Oh, it's going to be fast though, boys. Oh my god. This F12 is an absolute ripper. After we did that first test ride, I raised all the rollers. It had three fives in it all around, 3.5 grams. I end up changing all six rollers to five fives. It is absolutely way too heavy of rollers right now, so it absolutely hates it. I also changed the needle clip one down to let more fuel in because it seemed like it was running a little lean on the bottom end. I think carb tuning is still off, but I want to get the CVT right before I really mess with the carb anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull three of the five fives out and put three three fives in. So now it's gonna be three three fives, three five fives. Sounds confusing, but um, basically lowering another six grams out of here because uh, we upped it 12 grams and uh, it's a little too much. Also, this brake situation needs to be fixed. It's annoying because we got pulled a whole freaking headset off just to tighten that. So uh, yeah, we're gonna do both those right now. So I saw a couple comments asking how I wired this and if I'm able to actually just switch off the water pump. And like I said, yes, because the ground is key ground from the ignition, that everything else is key switch 12. So I can actually just come in here and just completely take out my battery, have nothing hooked up for power. So therefore there's no water pump going because the water pump's not on, none of the lights come on, and I can still start the bike like this. I haven't started yet, so it's a cold start, but I can still start the bike like that with no power going. That way I can warm it up easier. I don't even need to fully just disconnect the battery like that. I actually have a switch on the 18 volt connector. You can't see it, but there's a switch. You can hear it under there. So I can just switch power off and do the same thing. But yeah, boys, simple as that. Let's let this thing warm up and let's go try it out. I think the jetting's gonna be super off, but I mostly just wanna see if I need to order a set of rollers because those three fives and five fives is all I have for the overrange rollers. They're big rollers. I only have one overrange kit and it's in this bike, so I haven't bought a roller kit yet. I don't want to get on it too hard yet. So that's like 35 cruising. 50. Oh yeah. Dude, the back brake is sketched though. We need to figure out a rear brake situation, I think, for this. 
this scooter, boys. We need to do a rear disc swap. Yeah, it's on the ridge right there at the idle. Yeah, that clutch is very soggy right now once we got it warm. It was feeling good before, but now it's feeling like it used to. That when I let it back down, it that sogginess. The temps are good. It's hard to see the temp gauge in the daytime, but we're at 140. And we're only hit 11.5 revving. We should be almost like 13K with this. All right, tuning. Tuning is fun. Tuning is fun on the F12. We're solving problems over here, but I think I found a little bit of my issue, most possibly we will find out. Uh, basically, I have a strong spring here and I have a stage six overrange torque driver. I have the full stage six overrange, everything. And uh, from what I've seen, and now that I recall, I think the overrange really only likes soft contras because when I had this setup on the pre-bug, I was running the pink contra. Once I put this setup into my F12, I ran a stiff one. And from there on, I always had trouble tuning this, uh, this setup and I think last time I changed the soft spring it went a lot easier I tried hard spring again because I thought this setup would be very very aggressive I would assume it wants a hard contra but soft spring still might be the move for this setup so we're gonna throw the soft spring in just to see and then I got a brand new belt as well we're gonna throw on too because this belt is very very old it's been on that uh, setup on the pre-bug for a long time so throw a new belt on and let's see if we can't get this thing a little bit happier but the roller weight setup seems pretty good right now. I basically have um, three three fives and three five fives, which is basically running, you know, a full set of four fives. So um, that's looking good so far. Hopefully, get the CVT dialed, and then we can really fine tune the carbon. We've been tuning away at the F12. I haven't really filmed too much of it because I've just been coming in here, pulling the CVT cover up, putting it back on, taking the car out, putting the car. It's just a bunch of back and forth. Right now, I'm gonna go do uh, another ride, and I think this will be where we stand on this video. And, and next time I got plans to take it somewhere really, really cool and we're gonna do some testing on this thing. I can really, you know, do some long runs on it, plug check, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, Not so, so much city streets. What I ended up with right now is a 125 main. I threw a 35 pilot in it um, and I put the needle clip one down from the top. I moved it to the middle, to the down, to the top, moved it all around. I found out that one down from the top it's kind of like the sweet spot right now. I think I could tune the carb a little bit more and uh, it would like that top clip. I'm going to fire this thing up and we're going to go on a little ride. I'm going to throw the draggy on and we'll get some samples, just some base runs before we really, really dive into fine tuning it. This right now is just at the point of tuning it where I feel safe enough to ride it without uh, risking anything. So I know what the setup is right now. But yeah, F12 is absolutely amazing and I'm so stoked on this thing. But compared to all these other little bikes that I have, you know, the pre-vugs and the leads are tiny little things. You can just tell by the size. This thing's actually a beast, man. It's actually a beast. And for how fast this is, it's crazy that a scooter this big, and this thing's heavy in the front. Like, very, very heavy. It just pulls the front wheel up. It's pretty nuts. The, the GP1 is just absolutely insane. It pulls the front wheel up all the way to like 70 miles per hour. This thing is only a 70cc. This is a 94cc RC1. And this thing is a different story. And we're going to be working on this thing next because... Like I said, after messing with this one, the ignition, feeling better about this one now. The draggy was completely dead. So we're unable to use the draggy right now, and it's probably going to take it like 30 minutes for it to charge. So we'll do some speed runs when we go out testing in the next video. But for now, I just want to show you guys, the F12 is an absolute ripper right now. All right, boys, it is so windy outside right now, but we got the F12. We're cruising, we're letting it warm up a little bit. This bike feels good, dude. 50. This thing flies, bro. And it definitely likes that soft contour like what I was thinking. So I'm glad we figured that out. And these overrange kits, I just don't think they like that stiff shift. Especially with that big pulley. Carb still needs a little bit of tuning on that bottom end. We need to do some plug chops and actually see what we're dealing with here. It's a little harder with the water cooled because the temps don't change as, as much. But we're definitely staying really, really cool. So I think we can uh, 
You lean it out a little bit. Oh my god. The wind is fighting against us right now, boys. Literally picks up. This thing you used to have to like kind of pull it up. You had to find the sweet spot and then pull back. Now it's just like leaning forward. Seventy right there. Holy smokes! Hundred plus kilometers in like. Oh yeah, that's like seventy-five, dude. This thing's gonna be like an eighty-mile-per-hour bike, and we're not even at the right tune spot right now. coming up quick on the cars no matter where you hit it at bro it's like the GP1 it's kind of crazy this motor like feels like an RC1 now almost oh there's that back brake that soggy back brake oh the wind we're going against the wind now we're hitting like about 13k RPM though oh my god that wind is so strong it's like a parachute look how fast we're slowing down with no brake that's crazy. That's probably why it came back so fast on that wheelie. The wind probably got under it. Oh man, this wind is strong. All right, this thing, absolute ripper. Certified ripper. We just hit probably like 75 without even the proper tuning on this thing. So this thing's gonna be a high 70s bike, possibly about 80s. And uh, like I said, we do have an up gear in here too. I can't remember exactly what gearing setup we did, but uh, yes. This stage six pipe, by the way, man, this thing leaks out of every single crevice part and really, really, really seal this thing up. It's kind of crazy it's leaking that much out of there. That is going to do it for this one though, boys. Getting a lot of feedback on this bike, so I'm stoked you guys like it as much. You know, three videos and we got this thing fully, fully swapped to a liquid cooled inner rotor ignition racing setup. A lot of you guys have been asking for this project for a while. I've been talking about this liquid cooled swap for a while and a lot of you guys have been wanting to see a liquid cooled swap. So. Hope you guys are stoked on that. Make sure you guys check out the website, mopboys.com. It's in the description down below. Support the channel. If you guys want to keep seeing the videos progress, better bikes, better content, everything like that, make sure you guys support the channel. And there's going to be a lot more coming very, very soon. And stay tuned to see what we're going to do with this motor giveaway and everything for 100,000 subscribers. So make sure you hit the subscribe button. We'll get there very shortly, and I'll see you guys in the next one.